American Born Chinese is a new streaming show on Disney Plus about a second generation immigrant in high school named Jin Wong. It's also the story of a shape shifting monkey god who jumps through a cloud portal after stealing a legendary relic and disguises himself as one of Jin Wong's classmates. The first episode, What Guy Are You, is 46 minutes long and concentrates on introducing us to both characters. On this podcast, we like to discuss the most recent installment of a different series every show. It's May 26th. Welcome to today's episode. What are the four major heavenly disciplines? Okay, so we're we're going into the lore of the show right now, which to me is the weakest part, uh, and I have no idea. What oh. are the four <laughs> major disciplines? What we're told at the beginning is that there's this jade empire that lives in the heavens, basically, yeah. yes, okay? And the bull demon is this evil dude who is trying to take down the empire. Um, we're supposed to root for the Empire, which if you've watched Star Wars is kind of strange. <laughs> but yes, we're on the side of the Empire, which really shouldn't be much of a competition. Like the bull demon is just the bull demon and the Empire has existed for eons and eons. It's thousands of years. And so what happens, though, is that their main weapon, the one that the uh, Jade Empire uses to as defense, gets stolen. It's the staff. It's the iron staff of the Monkey King. And the Monkey King's son is actually the one who takes it. And that's the guy I was talking about in the intro, who then runs around, jumps into a cloud portal at the beginning of the episode, and then we're introduced to just regular Earth Jin Wong in his high school life. When you say Monkey King, is this all like CGI? Have you seen um, the Mowgli uh, movie, Jungle Book, the one yeah. when that came out? How it started off, the live action one, with him running through the fields with the little dogs or the wolves chasing him? The jungle, him. the panthers, That's yeah. kind of what's happening with two monkey people. One is the dad and one is the son, and the son has the staff. And when the dad catches him, he's like, you don't even know how to use it. Give it back. And the son's like, no way, dad. And then he jumps into the cloud and then he disappears. And they both have big monkey beards. Okay, so this is actually very interesting because I did read the graphic novel yesterday just to try and understand the show. And it seems like things that were meant to be reveals, they're revealing within the first like second. I think that's all supposed to be revealed at the very end or the ending issue of the graphic novel. And here it seems like they're just like, no, screw it. We're going to put it in the beginning. Well, I put it as a con because it just felt like too much prologue. And it was something that I didn't like feel that interested in when I first saw it like I much more liked the comedy in the high school realm of this new kid who is or not new kid but he's just starting his 10th grade year and he's got like a bunch of different social antics going on and he's just trying to figure his life out you know yeah and I think that part of the reason for that is because Ben Wong actually this is his second time working with Disney uh playing a teenager in high school his he name in real life is Ben Wong and his name in the show is Jin Wong yeah Okay. And he actually was in Chain Can Dunk, a Disney Plus film that came out a couple months ago where he was playing the friend. So it seems like he's almost You've talked been... about that before because <laughs> that's the film that you read in like the pilot to or the uh, script to before it even became a movie. Right? It won some type of script competition. Yeah, best unproduced uh, script or something like that. Yeah, but he wasn't the main character in that. I no, assume. here though, he is, right? Yes. <laughs> and so you have yeah. so you have Ben Wong and then you have like four different people from everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, right? well, you have the the two leads from yeah. everywhere all at once everywhere everything everywhere all at once but they don't show up until much later in mm -hmm. i should just describe what's going on in jin wong's life because that's how the story is presented to us he's about to start 10th grade he's an introvert but he's making progress into cracking into the popular group because of his talent playing soccer have you seen chad yeah, well, no, I, I remember doing we research We did the for podcast it. for yeah. it, but did you ever see an I didn't episode watch of it? an episode of it, no. Okay, but you have seen Never Have I Ever. Yes. Both of those are coming-of-age comedies where the main character is desperately trying to fit in and not be ostracized or made fun of because of their cultural heritage, right? They're all embarrassed by their parents, introverted personalities, but they have to eat a lot, lot of shit when it comes to, like, racism <laughs> or low-key racism. Um, that's kind of what Jin Wong's life is right now. He's, he's even had a falling out with one of his friends, a new they were both sort of nerdy together, but because of Jin Wong's excellence in his soccer ability, he's like made new friends and Anuj came to like support him one day wearing makeup and like uh, dressing up in a cosplay outfit. And that is what caused the friends to make fun of or Jin's new friends to make fun of Anuj and hence that breakup. Um, and then there's also that he's a second generation immigrant. So he knows Mandarin, but not as well as his parents. Uh. 
you can tell that there's like a generational and identity gap between him and his mom. Like they're going shopping in the first scene because again, he's about to start 10th grade. He wants the cool looking like jacket, but it's too expensive. Kind of reminded me of Atlanta. Um, and then his mom is like recommending him to take these other clothes, which end up being looking like really ridiculous or goofy. And uh, and then he sees Amelia there and of course embarrasses himself. From what I remember in the comic book, yeah. I don't think that we see the parents until very late. They're in. a secondary storyline. Because like what's happening is his dad uh, should be asking for a raise. That's what the mom wants. But the dad is too afraid to. He doesn't want to get fired. He mm -hmm. doesn't want to like raise an issue at work. But concentrating just strictly on Jin for now, it's his first day. It's going pretty well. He's got soccer tryouts coming up. He's got his new friends. Um, he meets this girl, Amelia, and that's he immediately hits it off with her. He likes her. You can tell they have share bio together. She sits in front of him. And then in his bio class, that's where I see Brian Husky. The Google Brian guy. Husky. And it has taken that guy way too long to be cast in a role like this because this is his bailiwick. This is him playing the goofy teacher is the best thing ever. The guy <laughs> from College Humor. The one who plays the Google guy. Again, oh, yeah. Yes. Perfect casting. So <laughs> okay. 10 out of 10 for that. And so he's the smart Alec teacher doing a great job with that. And Amelia and uh, Jin are just about to become lab partners when the principal walks in pulls Jin out of class and introduces him to this kid named Wei Chen, who is an international student who happens to be Chinese. And the principal says, well, you look alike, so you might as well. She doesn't say that, but like, obviously that's what she means. Yes. And so uh, he is racially stereotyped into having to take care or having the, this kid shadow him for the rest of the, the day. And this doesn't have to deal with the reviews at yes. all, but with Wei Chen, this character specifically has been a source of controversy. His character in the show, as you said, is Chinese. He's from China. In the novel, he was from Taiwan and he was Taiwanese. And so a lot well, of isn't people... Jin, isn't Jin Taiwanese? Because his mom even mentioned that back in Taiwan. So I thought that Jin was from Taiwan and that, that Wei Chen was from China. I think I think uh, he's from China. I think he's Chinese in they the did, show. They did mention tai hmm, Taiwan okay. in the show. But yeah, so Wei Chen, he's playing this dorky character, but he's not self-conscious about it. In fact, that's kind of the thing that embarrasses Jin is that all the things that he's been trying to keep at bay, like uh, quiet, like I'm good at soccer. I don't pay attention to manga. I'm not like a nerdy uh, cosplayer or anything like that. But Wei Chen doesn't care. He's talking about that stuff uh, in front much, of everybody this else. This very much fits the character. And so yeah. as soon as he walks back into a science classroom, Amelia has gotten a different partner. Mm. So I don't understand why he didn't lock her down sort of when she asked originally. Like, yes, I will be your partner now. I'll be right back. Oh, he didn't say yes already? Like, yeah. I know you said they were about to be, but I thought it was she like, was like so do you have a lab out. partner? And that's when they called him out. And he could have at that point said, yes, you. You're my yeah. lab partner and then gotten out of there. But no, they don't do that. So now he has to be a lab partner, I assume, with, uh, with Wei Chen. Uh, but they do hit it off a little bit because they both enjoy the same manga, right? Yes, right. What, what manga I, is I couldn't get the name. <laughs> they said it like 15 times and he had an action figure for it. The thing was that like Jin had wa read the first three novels of the manga uh, thing, but apparently they were more released, but not in reality because apparently this manga is actually the heavenly like thing that <laughs> Wei Chen is from because we learn that Wei Chen is the monkey guy, the right. monkey son very soon afterwards right well the thing is is that in the comic book it starts off with at least i think like 15 to 20 pages where we just take place in the monkey universe uh -huh. we see the monkey king who apparently is an iconic character in chinese korean japanese and really asian cultures apparently he bought buddhism from india to china because the american-born chinese again the graphic novel is uh the same name mm -hmm. apparently it took a lot from kind of 16th century tales and uh and bought it over here yeah. so so they're trying to implement a lot of culture into it i get it so how much of the monkey king do you see in the first episode because it's a big part well, i told you that you've got the prologue with it and then you got like a really small cut scene where he's like we have to find wei chen and then at the very end that's where you get this climactic battle in this high school hallway but i will get there pretty soon okay. first of all jin is just back at home also the funny thing is jin goes through this entire episode and doesn't realize it's a supernatural world like, he ends the episode, and he's just looking at an action figure. He still doesn't know anything about Wei Chen's past. So mm -hmm. I don't know how true that is to the comic. But, uh, so Wei Chen, remember when I said he went shopping with his mom? Yeah. he really liked that jacket? He stole that jacket. 
So he brought it home with him. He takes off the tag and he puts it on and he's like, I'm going to be the coolest guy sorry, in school, Sorry, you said right? Wei Chen. Sorry, the... sorry, sorry. I did, did I say Wei yeah, Chen? Wei I meant Chen. Jin. Okay, yeah, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, Jin w- went with his mom to the uh, to shop in the first uh, scene and then he stole and then he the jacket. Stole the jacket. Yes. Okay. So he goes to school and he's like, I'm going to be the coolest uh, guy. I'm going to uh, ask Amelia out. And he does. And she's like, yeah sure as a friend for now like she obviously she's a little timid uh-huh, because about even it. even in the, that's in the comic books it's like they're actually going out they're more serious than just friends I, I, so so what happens is this he he approaches her in the jacket he's looking cool and that's when wei chen pops up in the same jacket and he's like <laughs> twins, okay. twins time <laughs> that sounds like it would be pretty funny yeah but jin didn't take it that way um and in fact it came off a little embarrassing so amelia that's when she says the thing about them hanging out but as friends for now mm-hmm. um okay. and so then he gets mad at <laughs> wei chen he turns around and then i think he like smacks his head in the door he falls into a trash can the trash can like wheels around and hits into one of those glass framed um the, the thing that hold the trophies, you yeah. know, in high schools. And everybody starts laughing. Someone makes a TikTok out of it. He gets memed. And so this is where the everything, everywhere, all at once guy comes into play. The the guy from the Goonies. You're talking about Ki Huey Kwan. So there was a 90s TV show, right? Like BoJack. But it was <laughs> it was like a really goofy TV show. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it's only looked at through a different light now. Think of like um, with uh, Kevin can go fuck himself where like the wife's uh, portrayal is always like supposed to be this put together lady who's with a schlub. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is where the sidekick character is always the butt of the joke, the physical joke Mm. and the funny talking like immigrant. You know, like kind of like Robin in the Batman uh, in the Batman TV series and uh, and everything else. Yeah, Yeah, I would not compare it. It's literally where they're just kind of like where there's also been the stereotype that the uh, black guy dies first in a a horror Horror movie, movie. kind of like that. But uh, so in TikTok. The, there's been a meme going on where like a ceiling fan lands on the guy's head <laughs> on the TV show. Like there, it happens so much that like that's a meme where the ceiling fan. It's just an on running joke. And everybody just laughs at it. And then at one point, Jin sees uh, like two girls watching it. And the, one of the girls is like, this isn't racist, right? And it clearly like is a little racist. Obviously, yeah. And so, but what happens with him because he got hit and he fell into the trash can and then he like slammed into the thing. Someone memed the uh, the ceiling fan falling on his head. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, and so that video goes out and Jin thinks it's this guy named Travis who he is technically friends with. One of the soccer people he plays with but it ends up not being travis it ends up being the nice jock varsity player who seemed like the only non-racist cool kid in town Uh, Uh uh-huh all right and so but that we is not revealed until the very end he messes up his soccer tryout because he tries to get back at travis he like attacks him and then wei chen kind of gives him a pep talk at the end even gives him the manga uh action figure doll that he had um and then that's when wei chen goes into the school and he finds his father there he takes out the staff that he stole and they start having a fight scene and it's really cool it's like an inception fight scene where gravity doesn't matter and they're doing parkour off the side thing and then his fairy godmother like appears out of hold nowhere hold on hold yes. on okay so you're saying that wei chen he gave uh jim wong jin yeah jin the, the one of the racist people always call him jim Okay, like so everybody Jin, who's racist calls him Jim, so don't call him Jim. Gives, gives Jin this, yes. this action figure, which is from the comic books, yes. and tells him to go home. Wei Chen he then... He doesn't tell him to go home, but he does go home, and, and he like tells his parents to stop arguing, and he just hangs out in his room. And then Wei Chen goes into the, the high, high school, school, and that's when his father finds him, and he's like, I found you, you know? Because <laughs> okay. he, he looks up in the sky, and there's that cloud that he jumped in through from the other side. And uh, you're saying that they're fighting off of walls, martial arts style, and yeah, then... there's a big fight scene. It's, it's cool looking looking the whole the whole show has like this filter on it like a gravelly filter which i'm not sure if it fits the style it, like it's it's kind of like an atlanta filter almost like it was shot in 16 millimeter okay film or something it, yeah i think i know what you're kind of talking about is it like kind of grainy like yellow yeah but they also do the action scenes with it which makes it kind of like hard because like on your computer and i have a okay computer i would think that disney plus could like do a better job making the like cool like it seems like it was shot to be a movie almost it, it's strange but then the fairy god the mother appears that's the everything everywhere all at once lady she <laughs> says what are you doing monkey god let your son live out his dream and she makes the staff into a toothpick he sticks it into his ear and then the son goes off to do his like uh, finish his thing and i i assume that uh Jin, has something to do with the fate of like stopping the what, what what's the bad guy's name again the bull demon the bull so, demon so yeah. so I think Wei Chen is getting close to Jin so that he, they can team up together and 
fight the bull demon. But okay. I, but I don't know. But that's where the monkey god decides to leave his son alone, and uh, th that's where we kind of leave the episode. It's interesting that you say that this was shot like a movie because Destin Daniel Credin, he's directed things like Jess Mercy and Shang Chi. In fact, he's even going to be uh, he directing... directed Shang Chi. Yeah, Shang Chi, and he's also directing uh, currently the Avengers: The Kang Dynasty, scheduled for 2025. In fact, one of the reasons why Michelle Yeoh, yeah. the main person from Everything of Everywhere All at Once, and also married to the or not married to the guy is she is, is she married to the guy she was just married to the guy in the other thing yeah but michelle yo she decided to agree to go on the show because she wanted to work with daniel uh dustin daniel credit again and she was like i would absolutely i like dropped everything and just decided to do it the one thing i found interesting about this show was that apparently casting for it was casted even before everything everywhere all at once came out wow yeah so it's been there for a while in season two they're all going to be super old <laughs> Well, I'm not sure if this is, is this is supposed to be a limited series or not, because I know that uh, the graphic novel was finished in, like, 2006, and there's not going to be another one of those. Well, in with, fact, like, Paper Girls, which was also a graphic novel, right? That was a comic book, yeah. Okay, um, how about the other one, the uh, the, the other Marvel series, Miss Marvel, right? That Ms. was Marvel? based off a of comic yeah, book, I too, mean, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I remember Does that get a second that. season? I, I think it is. Or they're at least coming out with a movie because there's, like, the Marvels, which is coming out, which is supposed to combine all of them or something like that, But right? this isn't, like, a Marvel Marvel show, is it? No, this isn't Marvel at all, I don't think. Okay, all right. So that's I was just getting a little confused no. how this comic book universe that they were setting up here was going to uh, extend. Daniel, uh, Dustin Daniel Credin, he's the one who has directed the first episode of this and the last episode of this series, said, has yeah. just worked on Marvel films. This is its completely like separate, different sure. thing. Uh, but Kelvin Yu, does that name sound familiar? No. He's the one who created this series. He has worked on things like Master of None, he played Ned in the After Party, and very recently, oh, I know who that is. Yeah. very recently, voiced Confucius in Clone High, or our last show. I meant to ask. So, how did Abe get canceled in Clone High again? Like, what did he end up saying that got him canceled? Uh, he was. He said uh, Indian when it was supposed to be Native American. And that was the thing. That was. But the main thing was he said gay. The reason I ask is because there's a lot of like subtle racism in this, and I'm just. It's funny how with uh, Clone High they were making the point that no one can be racist anymore in any way without mm -hmm. getting like it pushed back on them. But it seemed like there was plenty of racism directed towards Jin, just like how they mispronounced his name all the time, how the principal just walked in and matched him with this uh, other guy who was Chinese, and how like the kids would be laughing at the Beyond Repair show, which was um, obviously that 90s sitcom with the, with the falling ceiling fan. Yeah. yeah, and some of that also kind of addressing the graphic novel as well. Jin Yoon Lang, the author of the graphic novel, didn't even want to make this series for the longest time. Because they didn't think they could adapt it. Right? Yeah, like right after... Like an Ender's Game situation. In 2006, I know people came to him and were like, hey, we really want to make this into a TV series. And for the longest time, he just decided to say no. Hmm. But uh, this has been a very highly anticipated series. And because of that, I wanted to see if you could spot the lie because I have a three truths, one lie game. Shoot, yeah. Okay, so the first one is Joe Biden hosted a screen of the first episode of the White House in honor of Asian Americans. A lot I of the cast attended the screening. I doubt that. The second one is uh, the Dan not because it's not, but it just seems like they would screen everything everywhere all at once maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the second one is the Daniels, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner, the creators of Everything Everywhere All at Once, directed the fourth episode of the series, Make a Splash. That's the name of the episode. The third one is, although the graphic novel was started in 2000, it wasn't released until 2006. Melvin Marr, an executive producer, approached Kelvin Yu around five years ago to adapt it. And then the last one was, the cast for this show was already picked before Everything Everywhere All at Once came out. Okay. You said that one was Yeah, I already said true. that one. Yeah. yeah, these are very dense. I would, I would say it's the first one. I don't see this one being played in the white house joe biden did host a screening of this wow. in fact Ki over everything everywhere all at once yeah Ki-Hu why Kwan, not see that Ki-Hu Kwan, Kwan actually uh spoke right before the screening for this thing and he threw a private screening for everything everywhere all at once and uh invited the cast and crew who all went to go see the movie so biden <laughs> has definitely seen the show yeah he's what seen the he first of episode it? of it i don't i didn't get what he actually thought of it uh, that but would be quite the interview <laughs> but that's the, that's the craziness about it. I mean, this show, it seems like it's supposed to be big. Even when Disney Plus heard about it, it was a straight to series order. Hmm. I would, I'm, I'm going to give it a seven out of 10, which when five is average, that's, that's pretty good. But six is usually passing. So seven out of 10. Okay. Yeah. 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 The pros are this. You've got that cool high school hallway fight scene with Wei Chen and his father, which was way better than the first fight scene that we got way back at the beginning. Um, because they're in the beginning thing. I think they tried too hard with the CGI 
CGI where the father kept on changing into different, uh, shape-shifting into different figures like wolves and then jumping in the ocean and becoming like a whale. Uh-huh. And, yeah. But I, I think that the intersplicing of the fight scene at the end with the family argument was really good. I thought the main character was pretty good. Like his acting, did, he was able to play awkward very well without playing too nerdy. I also like that the show didn't introduce him knowing about the superheroes quite yet. Mm-hmm. Like that seems seems like it's a little nuanced. He was actually my favorite character. The main character this was my favorite character in Shane Ken Dunk. And I think that you were talking about kind of shape shifting and all of the stuff that happened in the first scene. There yeah. was there was four major heavenly disciplines, four disciplines of invulnerability, and four major disciplines of bodily form. And I think that him shape shifting was the last of the bodily form disciplines. Mm-hmm. So I think that they were trying to kind of make a connection to that. Maybe it just didn't work out as well or something. It's just the yeah, it, it you jump right into it and I I wasn't into it. Throws you right into the action, yeah. I guess. Okay. The comedy is pretty good. It doesn't get better than the Google guy. He's, he's the best part of the show. But the second best part of the show was when he was trying on clothes in the very early part. And he puts on this uh, jacket that looks okay. And then he turns or, and then Amelia approaches him and is like hot stuff. And he turns around and he sees there's a giant pepper on the back, a cartoon pepper that says <laughs> hot stuff on the back. And it's just like he immediately like tries to take it off. It was, it was really funny. The cons, though, is the prologue. Um, I don't understand why Amelia wasn't his partner. Like, why didn't he just say yes to that? Uh, less than 10 percent of high school's now have lockers and yet this show has tons of lockers and i just don't find that believable yeah, anymore right. and then here's here's probably the biggest con and maybe the most controversial so the racism is nuanced which is nice none of the characters are outright like we just hate chinese people or anything that would, <laughs> that would be crazy in this day and age right um there's no vulgar terms being thrown his way it's a lot of just like bad puns and and kids are being insensitive around him which is great for portraying this type of issue however it somehow becomes really pronounced because every single time that a jock or a popular kid is shown they're always the ones who are participating in being super insensitive you you really don't get a good character maybe besides amelia who isn't sort of a dick at the same time they generalize popular kids as all being racially insensitive. I, under, I understand and I what you're like saying. I feel like that's there. an oversimplification. That's the way that it is in the graphic novel, though. Yeah. That's how it is. But that's how it is, how it is in most portrayals of this sort of issue, is mm-hmm. that there are no popular kids who are also good. They always have this caveat of them being a little bad, that's of right. like a little racist. And it just, it does, it seems like that's been done so much that it is becoming a trope. But at the same time, I do give it credit for being nuanced with its ability to show racism. Mm-hmm. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So no. Seven out of ten for me. I still think it's worth a watch if you're into these type of shows. Are you going to watch as far as superhero series? shows? No, probably not because I've got so much other stuff on my plate. Okay. So overall, it has a six point seven on IMDb, around three hundred reviews. Uh, but critical consensus has been pretty good. It has a ninety three percent on Rotten Tomatoes, seventy nine percent audience score. I also should mention that the fake one out of all of them was actually the Everything Everywhere All at Once directors directing an episode. Mm-hmm. It just felt so strange to me that they because of the cast again you have like four people from that film already in this you feel like they would have some type of connection but apparently no Mm -hmm. Uh, but they actually got big people like Lucy Liu I know is directing the sixth episode I think and and just everything else but the Guardian gave the show three out of fives and said the CGI is laptop screensaver level and the fight sequences feel inconsequential See, I don't know if it is actually laptop like it felt like it should be better if you watched it on a better device but I was watching it on a pretty good device. They praised the final act, which is something that you were talking about, yep. and also the pacing. And the New York Times said about the show, the traditional family story is the show's strongest feature. On the downside are the elements that are not as imaginative as they need to be to kick the series out of its better than average groove. Yeah, the supernatural world is not as cool as just the high school world, which mm-hmm. is interesting, right? Yeah. All right, well, thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye. Bye.